in today's episode, find out how I got my boat on this beach here. All right, it's new morning. Today's the day we head to Mont Saint Michel. We're on our way. No wind right now. The wind's supposed to start around 11, so we can motor for a couple hours. The tide is starting to turn over to our favor. It's exciting. I've never careened the boat before. A lot of people will careen the boat out of the water, you know, for like painting the hull or uh, replacing through holes real quick and stuff. Um, I've never needed to do that, but it's good. It's good skill. It's good to say I've done it before, I suppose. You know, if I ever need it. Cast day we've got. So the wind's finally made an appearance, so I got the sails up. It's super light, but we're moving like two and a half knots. We might still be coasting a little bit from the motor power though. A little bit uh overcast, but it's getting better. I think I think maybe the sun will come out or at least clear the fog clears up a little bit. I'll say Michelle should be Somewhere up there. We could see it the other day, yesterday, so not don't see it yet, but I will keep my eyes out. Sometimes I feel like I can see it, but can't really. No signal out here. I think I'm gonna trim this mustache off. Let's let's change it up a little bit. So the plan is to sail as far up onto this tidal plane here, and you can see the tides are gonna be up to 28 feet and each day they rise which is a good kind of just just in case we get stuck we'll be able to get off later and then we'll sail as far up onto the tidal plane as we can and let the boat dry out you can see here it's about 22 feet above sea level so that should be doable with the uh, tides and our draft and hopefully we can walk up to the the castle so we are coming up the water change colors coming up on the tidal plane here you can see we'll see michelle there we go. There it is. Yeah, I guess we just see how far we make it until we touch the bottom. That is the plan, really. We got a few more hours till high tide, so we might hit the bottom and then go a little further as the tide comes up. So I've turned off the motor just to let the tide drift us in. Uh, the tide still has to come up, go down, go up a few more feet over the next couple hours. So that should get us in a few more miles closer. I do want to get closer. I mean, you can, you can make it out, but I think if we get a few miles closer, it'd be much cooler. Um, the, 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 what they say is the tide moves as fast as a galloping horse or faster. Um, I think that's probably only at the, the, the most extreme tides, which we're not in right now. Unfortunately, it would be pretty cool to get right up to that castle. Maybe next time. So we're down to eight, eight to nine feet of water. And our draft is four feet, so yeah, we can drift it a little further. Making some sausage rolls for, for lunch. Can make it out pretty good with the binoculars. Yeah, the water is definitely not going all the way to the castle yet. And there's sandbars all around. I don't wait. Oh yeah. Castle's coming into focus here. So I wanna dry the boat out so it's tilted up slope and I want the uh it to lean over on its left side, the port side, because that's the side my my bed is on, so that I'm not falling out of bed tonight. Oh, I feel like we touched the bottom. Maybe. <laughs> you hear the sand underneath us. I don't know why I'm so excited about this. It's stupid. <clears throat> okay, the tide's probably gonna lift us back up and carry us further though. Oh, bump. There's another bump. Well, it feels pretty soft. I didn't really think about the bumping. How, how annoying that would be. I mean, it shouldn't last too long. I might try to back us out. Anchor. And then we'll go in a little further when the tide comes up. So I real quickly realized the error of my original plan, plan A, which was to ride in with the tide, just let the tide kind of carry me. Well, that was stupid because then I'm going to just be bouncing along the bottom and it's super uncomfortable and jarring for the boat, you know? Uh, but so, so then I, I dropped my anchor, let the tide lift me up, and then I motored 
it's a little bit further out so we're not bouncing on the bottom now so here plan b we're gonna wait till the tide goes all the way up turns around and then i'm gonna real slowly go into the tide either that or maybe i'll just set out anchor but that way once we hit the bottom the tide will be dropping so it won't be like it'll be a very short period hopefully of of bouncing on the ground before we're completely uh you know on our side so it should should be like maybe an hour before we're resting on our side and i think that'd be way better for the boat and me but you know it's all kind of a learning experience you know that's, that's why it's fun to do this thing you know why now when it's like good conditions and i don't really it's not like oh, there's a hole in the bottom i need to patch up so i can kind of figure out the intricacies of these these details which are important to to realize Coming out. Okay, I took a little nap. Now it's time to go through with the plan. I'm a little nervous. The wind has picked up a bit and we're rolling a little bit, but I think we're still in the acceptable range. It's gonna be a little bit uh a little bit nail biting when the when we get into the breaking waves, but I think we'll be okay. Coming up on it, a little further. Feels good. Yes, we stopped. 3.8, that's our bottom right there. Now we stopped. Very good. Right, our just coming up and down. Kind of regretting it a little bit, but I'm, I'm dedicated, I'm committed now. I rigged up my whisker pole over there onto the bottom. kind of help take the load off of the, the rudder. I think it seems to be helping a lot actually. Pickled herring. Oh man, look at that. So that's a view I'm not used to seeing of my boat. I'm a little bummed because if I had creened it just like 50 feet that way, I think I would have had the water, water would have been deep enough to make it closer to the uh, Monsi Michelle Castle over there. But, you know, get what you get. It all went out pretty well. It kind of, you can see the boat kind of dug itself a hole. And then the rudder, it looks like it's okay. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm going to do the zinc here. It's looking a little rough, so we'll swap that out while I've got it available. Probably get away with a little longer, but just amazed at how clean this bottom is. That's that fresh water swap, I think. It looks good on the other side, too. Uh, maybe I'll give us a little scrub. Just give a little scrub right here. Clean this up, and then we'll be looking pretty sharp for the for our season this year. This guy off. So nice to not have to do this underwater. And put that on there. And I also put a little bit of a Loctite just to be sure. I've heard they can come off sometimes with the prop spinning. All right, Let's see how easy this comes off. I 
Uh, it's probably worth doing. That would be fun, but it would look a lot better. Phew. Just drag the anchor <laughs> all the way over here to the, uh, I'm not sure if you can tell, this is the part that's like deeper. So when the tide comes up, I can pull myself out to deeper water real quick. Oh, but that was exhausting. That anchor and chain is like a hundred pounds. So I would not like to live on the boat like this for long. And climbing around is like super difficult. <clears throat> but luckily I got my bunk here on the low side. You can see the uh, jet boil. We're, about, we're, we're like exactly 45 degrees here. Not that I'm completely unfamiliar with this position. Just we're playing a game of cooking in bed on a 45 degree angle. Chicken and rice. Oh, good. All right, it's about uh, 2 a.m. and the tide's starting to lift us back up. It's a lot more uh, violent than I expected. The waves are kind of splashing against the hull. It really shakes the whole boat. But in a couple hours, we should be up and up. will use the anchor to pull us off. And hopefully our motor will start. Everything will, all the systems come on again. We've begun our sail into St. Malo. Well, I guess we did last night. And uh, overnight, we just went really slowly. That was fine, I got some sleep as we were kind of drifting off the tidal plane. And then now we're having to tack our way upwind, which was all right, but now I was getting a little tired of it. And then the wind shifted and it started raining and it just shifted, shifted just so perfectly that we only have to do one tack instead of like 10 or five that we would have had to do before. So I'm really happy about that, even though it's raining. This is probably my favorite sailing conditions. Uh, we got about seven to eight knots of wind and just flat water, cruising along at four knots. Very happy. Coming into the St. Malo. There's our channel there. St. Malo, Port de Savans Marina. Uh, this is sailing yacht Pickled Herring, Pickled Herring, Channel 9. Let's see if they answer. It's Sunday, so I don't know. Very long walk up the <laughs> marina ramp with the tides here. Got a drying out pad here where you can just tie your boat up and wash it.
Now I'm off to find the Immigrations and Customs Office so I can check back into the Schengen Zone and get my passport stamp. So we are at the ferry terminal. Apparently it's one of these buildings. Got my stamp. That was pretty easy, just in time. The police did it here. St. Malo is an old pirate town and the, the French king made it legal to be a pirate and you could pirate like the Spanish and Portuguese and other countries boats as long as you paid a little percentage as a tax to the king it was, it was okay with him and uh, I think they were called the Corsairs of St. Malo. They have a recreation of one of the fam famous pirates' ships. It's that yellow one right there. They had to rebuild the whole town after the war, but it was really impressive to walk around in the, in the walled city there. So I'm cutting up this uh, reusable grocery bag and I'm gonna make a waterproof cover for my autopilot. I used to have one, but I don't know what happened to it. So I'm just gonna use the speedy stitcher and stitch along the bottom so it'll be just be like a tube that could fit over it. So there's my seam. That speedy stitcher does such a good job. Being fast. Well, today I was gonna sail into the Rand, uh, but I'm a little, I think I'm, I'm gonna check it out because the wind is kind of strong and I'd be going into the locks downwind. And I just, uh, I feel like I'm gonna, it's just gonna make a mess of it. Cause there's, you gotta, you gotta pull into the locks and then the stop, there's like a bridge or something. I, I just, I just don't wanna do it by myself. Like we're rocking all over the place even here, just in the marina. So we'll just spend the night here and then I'll continue heading, uh, sailing along the coast tomorrow. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll tune in next time um, when I sail to the west coast of France in preparation uh, for my big Bay of Biscay crossing. A massive thanks to all the patrons and contributors to the channel who help make these videos possible. If you're interested in contributing to the channel, uh, there's links in the description that show how you can either make a one-time donation through PayPal or Venmo or uh, join the, the Patreon team, which uh, gets you access to the videos a few days early. Sometimes I'll even do like two or three videos and uh, post them out before I, I go on a back out to sea. So if you're into binging on the sailing videos, that could be a good option. But if you can't, then no worries at all. Just happy that you enjoyed the video enough to stick around to the end. I'll see you guys next time.